suppose secant of theta is equal to 4, and then you have to determine all the other ones. So the question is, secant theta is 4? What's tan of theta? What's sine of theta? What's cos of theta? Well, probably the easiest one to do would be to say that if I know secant is 4, what would cos be? 1 over 4, the reciprocal. Now, if cos is 1 over 4, and you want to find all the other ones between 0 and 180, they've already told you where to draw the triangle. How did they tell me? Like, here's my axis. How do I know where it is? Well, 0 to 180 is either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. How do I know which quadrant it's going to be? Yeah, the cast rule. And because cos is positive 1 over 4, it can't be in quadrant 2. It has to be in quadrant 1. So when I draw it, this side would be 1, this would be 4. This is my reference angle, which also happens to be my actual angle. Right, cos is also positive in quadrant 4. But in this one, all are positive in quadrant 1, and they're only looking between 0 and 180. But we are going to need to use the fact that cos is also positive in quadrant 4 for part B. But for part A, we now know that now, test your a squared plus b squared equals c squared skills. What's the other side going to be? Close. Closer. Square root of 50. Because <laughs> now you have the hypotenuse, right? So you'd have to do 16, which is 4 squared, minus 1 squared to get 15 for that other side. Now, if you want to write out a squared plus b squared equals c squared and show some work, that's perfectly fine. We're going to just do this so much that you're probably going to be able to do it in your head. So now that we got square root of 15, we can figure out sine of theta. Sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse. And we could figure out tan of theta. It's going to be opposite over adjacent. We already knew secant of theta. Beside sine of theta, cosecant of theta would just be the reciprocal. And beside tan of theta, I'll do cotangent, would just be the reciprocal as well. Mm just to mess you up. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, so tangent goes with cotangent. This makes sense. So cos secant goes with sine, because it has cos in it. Makes total sense, right? So those are going to be the ones that are going to hurt. You're going to mess up those ones. So you have to remember that they're opposite. Sometimes that study strategy doesn't work because sometimes things go together and sometimes they're opposite. And if you use those strategies too much to memorize, then it's like, oh, I don't remember. Is this one of the opposite ones or is this one of the same ones? Oh. Okay, part B. Now they want us to the nearest degree to find theta. So to find theta, we're always going to find our reference angle first. The other thing looking in this question, we're figuring out between negative 300 and 360 degrees. So we're now not just looking in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. We're looking in all four quadrants. 
and what you said before is true, that if cos of theta is one quarter, we could have it here in quadrant one with one and four and our reference angle here, but we could also have drawn it with the reference angle in quadrant four and still had one and four there, correct? So now the question is, if you want to first find your reference angle, you just have to go back to grade 10 math. Hey, I have a triangle. I have a triangle and I want to find my reference angle. I know this side is 1 and this side is 4. So how would you have done that back in grade 10? You would have said, I know that cos of my reference angle is 1 over 4. How do you find an angle? from grade 10 trig, just go to your calculator. You go to your calculator and you type in cos inverse. Does this, yes, remembering this? And so on my calculator, I make sure that I'm in degrees and I go cos inverse of one divided by four, 75.5. The question says round to the nearest degree, so 75.5. rounds to 76 degrees. And now we can use that reference angle to find all of the answers in the domain that they've given us. The domain that we've got is from negative 360 to 360. And standard angles always start from the positive x-axis. So when we have negative 360 to 360, we actually are going to think about 0 to 360 and 0 to negative 360 separately. Does that make sense? Because 0 to 360, that would be this one and this one. Would you agree that in the first quadrant, it's going to be exactly the same as your reference angle? So theta would equal 76 degrees. How would I find this one in quadrant four? Does that make sense? If we go all the way around 360 and subtract our reference angle, 360 minus 76, we're going to get 284 degrees. And then for the negative angles, we're going to think from zero to negative 360 which still is standard position, this one would have to go to there, and this one would have to go to there. In this case, I think the quadrant four one is easier. Can you see that if I start here and go here, it's exactly the same as my reference angle, but since I'm going in the clockwise direction, that's a negative angle, so it'll be equal negative 76 degrees. And if we're thinking about this one in quadrant one, okay, even my negative angles, I sort of think positively to begin with. All the way around is 360. I would have to subtract a reference angle to figure this out. So 360 minus my reference angle of 76 is going to be 284, just like we found last time. But now this red angle is going in the negative direction so I'd also have negative 284 degrees. Okay. Put a star beside this question because this is a very typical question that you get lots of questions on your exam about. Also, this chapter is all about trigonometry, solving for an angle, solving for different trig ratios. You have to draw a triangle and that triangle needs to include your reference angles. So it's sort of like all those definitions come together. Reference angles, standard position of an angle, and then all of the math that you've learned from before. So try 9, 10, and 11.